Let's do a little bit more practice with counting atoms. So in our first example, we have a water molecule, which we've already looked at. Looks like Mickey Mouse, right? So this is H2O. In this example, we have a picture of our water molecule, so you can see a visual re representation, and then we also have a chemical formula written out. So in a chemical formula, we're going to have letters and numbers that represent the elements that are present and the amount of those elements present. So in this example, we have H, which is hydrogen, and we have O for oxygen. The subscript 2 here, this small number, goes with the element directly in front. So this is showing us we have two H's, and then we just have one oxygen atom. So if we count that up and write that out, this is the amount we have present, two hydrogens and one oxygen. In our next example, oxygen molecule, this is our diatomic oxygen, where we have two oxygen atoms that are bonded together chemically. O2 is written out like this. So this is our element oxygen, and our subscript 2 applies directly to the oxygen atom in front of it. And there are no other numbers or elements present. So we just have two oxygen atoms. Our next example is carbon dioxide, CO2. This one, we do not have a number with the carbon. Anytime that we do not have a subscript present, then it's understood that there's just one of them. There's only that one C present. That would be drawn out like this. We have our carbon in the middle, and then we have two oxygen atoms. So for this example, we have one carbon, and then again, we have our subscript 2 that applies to the oxygen directly in front of it. So that's two oxygens. Here are some other examples to try. If you want, you can try drawing out what you think the model might look like, but it's not necessary. You can just look at the chemical formula and count off the atoms that way. If you need to, pause the video and give it a shot yourself. This is a glucose molecule. The chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. This is just one molecule of glucose. We know that it's just one molecule because there's no other number in front telling us otherwise. It's understood that there's just one of those present. So in this example, we have several subscripts and we have several elements present. We have three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. It's easy to count the elements because you just count the capital letters. If in the case of Fe over here in our next example, this has a lowercase letter. So the E goes with the capital letter in front of it. So Fe stands for iron, whereas if it was just F, capital F by itself, that would be fluorine. So to count the elements, you just count the capital letters. So in this example of glucose, we have C6 to start with. So that is six atoms of carbon. Our subscript 12 applies to the hydrogen right in front of that. So that's 12 hydrogen atoms. And the six here applies to the oxygen. So that means six oxygen atoms. Our next example of iron pyrite. So this is fool's gold, iron sulfide, FES2. So we have one atom of iron. We can look at our chemical formula here and the FE chemical symbol that stands for iron doesn't have any other number with it. So we know there's just one atom. The two applies to the sulfur, the S, right in front of it. So that means we have two atoms of sulfur. Our next example throws a coefficient in there. So this is showing us that there are two quartz molecules. So quartz is SiO2. This big number in the front, this coefficient, tells us that there are two of those molecules. So remember in our glucose example, that's just one molecule because there's no other number in the front of it. This one, we know there's two molecules because literally the big number in the front, two, tells us there's two sets of molecules. So this is literally saying there's one SiO2 and then there's a second SiO2. So in this example, we are going to do just a little bit of math and multiply. So we have our silicon here. There's no subscript with it, right? So it's understood that there's just one atom of that silicon, but we have two molecules of it. So we're going to multiply two times our invisible one, and that gives us two silicon atoms. Our other element here, oxygen, does have a subscript. It's got a two. So two times two, 
gives us four. So another way to do that is you could write out SiO2, SiO2, and you could count it up that way. So either way you do that, you should get the same amount of molecules in two quartz molecules. And our last one, baking soda, NaHCO3. So in this one, we have sodium, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen. So we have four elements present. We only have one number that's seen here, and that's the subscript 3, which we know goes only with the oxygen. There's no number in the front. There's no coefficient. How many molecules do you have? That's right. You just have one because there's no number in the front. If there's a number in the front of this chemical formula, then the number in the front tells us how many molecules there are. But there's not a number, so it's understood that there's just one. So we have one sodium atom. We have one hydrogen atom, one carbon atom, and three oxygen atoms. Good job.